Good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is James Sutherland. I'll be reading Judges uh, 16 through 18 this evening <clears throat> for our scheduled uh, reading that follows the Bridges for Peace uh, Bible reading plan. So let us begin. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, that we have this freedom to read your word openly without perfect. May your Holy Spirit <clears throat> prepare the hearts listening, and may you speak uh, in correction, instruction, and, and for your righteousness and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Judges 16. One day, Samson went to the Philistine city of Gaza, where he met a prostitute and went to bed with her. The people of Gaza found out that Samson was there. So they surrounded the place and waited for him all night long at the time. They were quiet all night, thinking to themselves, We'll wait until daybreak, <clears throat> and then we'll kill him. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the city gate, and pulled it up. Doors, posts, lock and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them all the way to the top of the hill overlooking Hebron. After this, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The five Philistine kings went to her and said, Trick Samson to tell you why he's so strong and how we can overpower him, tie him up, and make him helpless. Each one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong if one wanted to tie you up and make you helpless. How could he do it? Samson answered, They tie me up with seven new bowstrings that are not dried out. I'll be as weak as anybody else. <clears throat> so the Philistine kings brought Delilah seven new bowstrings that were not dried out, and she tied Samson up. She had some men waiting in another room, so she shouted, shouted Samson, the Philistines are coming. But he snapped the bowstrings just as a thread breaks when fire touches it. They still did not know the secret of his strength. Lila said to Samson, Look, you've been making a fool of me and not telling me the truth. Please tell me how someone could tie you up. He answered, If they tie me up with new ropes that have never been used, I'll be as weak as anybody else. So Delilah got some new ropes and tied him up. Then she shouted, Samson, Philistines are coming. The men were waiting in another room, but he snapped the ropes off his arms like thread. Delilah said to Samson, You are still making a fool of me and not telling me the truth. Tell me how someone could tie you up. He answered, If you weave my seven locks of hair into a loom and make them tight with a peg, I'll be as weak as anybody else. <clears throat> Delilah then lulled him to sleep, took his seven locks of hair, wove them into the loom, she made them tight with a peg and shouted, Samson, the Philistines are coming. But he woke up and pulled his hair loose from the loom. So she said to him, How can you say you love me when you don't mean it? You have made a fool of me three times and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She kept on asking him day after day. He got so sick and tired of her nagging him about it that he finally told her the truth. My hair has never been cut, he said. I've been dedicated to God as a Nazarite from the time I was born. If my, if my hair were cut, I would lose my strength and be as weak as anybody else. When Delilah realized that he had told her the truth, she sent a message to the Philistine kings and said, Come back just once more. He has told me the truth. Then they came and, and brought the money with them. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep in her lap and then called a man who cut off Samson's seven locks of hair. Then she began to torment him, for he had lost his strength. Then she shouted, Samson, the Philistines are coming. He woke up and thought, I'll get loose and go free as always. He did not know that the Lord had left him. The Philistines captured him and put his eyes out. They took him to Gaza, chained him with bronze chains, and put him to work, grinding at the mill in the prison. But the hair started growing again. The Philistine kings met together to celebrate and offer a great sacrifice to their god, Dagon. They sang, Our God has given us victory over our enemy, Samson. 
They were enjoying themselves, so they said, Call Samson and let's make him entertain us. When they brought Samson out of the prison, they made him entertain them and made him stand between the pillars. When the people saw him, they sang praise to their God. Our God has given us victory over our enemy who devastated our land and killed so many of us. Samson said to the boy who was leading him with the hand, Let me touch the pillars that hold the building. I want to lean on them. The building was crowded with men and women. All five Philistine kings were there, and there were about 3,000 men and women on the roof, watching Samson and making, enter, making him entertain them. Then Samson prayed, Sovereign Lord, please remember me. Please, God, give me my strength one more so that this one blow I can get even with the Philistines for putting out my two eyes. So Samson took a hold of two middle pillars holding up the building, put one hand on each pillar. He pushed against them and shouted, Let me die with the Philistines. He pushed with all his might, and the building fell down on the five kings and everyone else. Samson killed more people at his death than he had killed during his life. His brothers and the rest of the family came down to get his body, he took him back and buried him between Zora and Eshtal in the tomb of his father, Manoah. He had been Israel's leader for 20 years. There was once a man named Micah who lived in the hill country of Ephraim. He said to his mother, when someone stole those 1,100 pieces of silver from you, you put a curse on the thief. I heard you do it. Look, I have the money. I am the one who took it. His mother said, may the Lord bless you, my son. He gave the money back to his mother and said, to stop the curse from falling on my son, I myself am solemnly dedicating the silver to the Lord. It will be used to make the wooden wooden idol covered with silver. So now I will give the pieces of silver back to you. Then he gave them back to his mother, took 200 of the pieces of silver and gave them to a metal worker who made an idol, carving it from wood and covering it with the silver. It was placed in Micah's house. This man, Micah, had his own place of worship. He made some idols and an ephod and appointed one of his sons as his priest. There was no king in Israel at that time. Everyone did just as he pleased. At that same time, there was a young Levite who had been living in the town of Bethlehem in Judah. He left Bethlehem to find somewhere else to live. While he was traveling, he came to Micah's house in the hill country of Ephraim. Micah asked him, Where do you come from? He answered, I am a Levite from Bethlehem in Judah. I'm looking for somewhere to live. Micah said, Stay with me. Be my advisor and priest, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, some clothes, and your food. The young Levite agreed to stay with Micah and became like a son to him. Micah appointed him his priest, and he lived in Micah's home. Micah said, Now that I have a Levite as my priest, I know that the Lord will make things go well. In the tribe of Dan. There was no king in Israel at the time. In those days, the tribe of Dan was looking for territory to claim and occupy because they had not received any land of their own among the tribes of Israel. So the people of Dan chose five qualified men out of the families in the tribe and sent them from the towns of Zorah and Eshtal with instructions to explore the land. When they arrived in the hill country of Ephraim, they stayed at Micah's house. While they were there, they recognized the accent of the young Levite. So they went up to him and asked, What are you doing here? Who brought you here? He answered, I have an arrangement with Micah, who pays me to serve as his priest. He said to him, Please ask God if you're going to be successful on our journey. We are going to be successful on our journey. The priest answered, You have nothing to worry about. The Lord is taking care of you on this journey. So the five men left and went up to the town of Laish. They saw how safely the people there were living. The Sidonians, they were a peaceful, quiet people with no disputes with anyone. They had all they needed. They lived far away from the Sidonians and had no dealings with any other people. When the five men, um, when the five men returned to Zora and Eshtal, their countrymen, asked them what they had found out. 
Come on, they replied. Let's attack Laish. We saw the land, and it's very good. Don't stay here doing nothing. Hurry. Go on in and take it over. When you get there, you will find that the people don't suspect that you live in the country. It has everything a person would want, and God has given it to you. So 600 men from the tribe of Dan left Zora and Ethel, ready for battle. They went up and made camp west of Kiriath, Jerim, and Judah. That is why the place is still called the Camp of Dan. They went out on from there and came to Micah's house in the hill country at Ephraim. Then the five men who had gone to explore the country around Laish said to the, their companions, Did you know that there, here in one of these houses there is a wooden idol covered with silver? There are also other idols in an ephod. What do you think we should do? So they went into Micah's house where the young Levite lived and asked the Levite how he was getting on. Meanwhile, the 600 soldiers from Dan, ready for battle, were standing at the gate. The five spies went straight into the house and took the wooden idol covered with silver, the other idols, and the ephod, while the priest stayed at the gate with the armed men. When the men went into Micah's house and took the sacred objects, I asked them, What are you doing? They said, Keep quiet, don't say a word, come with us, and be our priest and advisor. Wouldn't you rather be with the wouldn't you rather be a priest for a whole Israelite tribe than for a family of one man? This made the priest very happy, so he took the sacred objects and went along with them. They turned round and started off with their children, their cattle, and their belongings going ahead. They had traveled a good distance from the house when Mike had called his neighbors out for battle. They caught up with the men from Dan and shouted at them. The men from Dan turned around and asked Micah, What's the matter? What? Why all this mob? Micah answered, What do you mean? What's the matter? You take my priest and the gods that I made and walk off? What have I got left? The men from Dan said, You had better not say anything else unless you want these men to get angry and attack you. Then you and your whole family will die. Then they went on. Micah saw that they were not they were too strong for him, so he turned and went back home. After the men from Dan had taken the priest and the things that Micah had made, they went back, attacked attacked Laish, the town of peaceful, quiet people that live in the same valley as Bethrahab. They killed the inhabitants and burnt the town. There was no one to save them, because Laish was a long way from Sidon and had no dealings with any other people. The men from Dan rebuilt the town and settled down there. His name from Laish to Dan, after their ancestor Dan, the son of Jacob. The men from Dan set up the idol to be worshipped, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom and grandson of Moses, served as a priest for the tribe of Dan, and his descendants served as their priests until the people were taken away and died at Exile. Michael's his idol remained there all the time, at the tent where God was worshipped remained. you for allowing me to read Judges 16 tonight. Um, everything I was thinking about as I was reading um, both the um, history of Samson as well as um, as well as the history of uh, Micah is how the Israelites and how God's chosen people and the Levites and would allow culture to their daily activities uh, and there was always a and some false peoples um, seeped into the culture from them not obeying God and, um, as it and, um, his behavior was uh, into his and, uh, and his persecution but ultimately God uh, also in his repentance in the Hall of Faith of Hebrews and the people would turn back to the one true God and it just was a never ending pool of sin and falling away from the one true God and um, being delivered over to uh, other non-believers um, people and sin 
just reminds me we're no different uh, today, and um, we're thankful that we have God's word um, that corrects our heart and it's the power of the Holy Spirit into us in that correction process. I hope you enjoyed the reading this evening, um, and I'm thankful that I can have a blessing.